It's Friday, Feedback Friday, the feedback is day of the week. <laughs> it's Feedback Friday to the first week that went according to Hoyle in a really long time. And if you notice something different about me, you are correct. Sorry about the glare on the lenses. These are not my normal lenses. These are the Mavericks from Gunner. They are real Gunners. Woo, they are real. And uh, Gunner sent me these. I got an email saying, do you want to try them? I'm like, yes, I've wanted to try out a pair of Gunners in, in my natural habitat for some time now. Uh, you guys know I normally have the, the yellow tinted lenses. I, um, I, I like the yellow. I know they have the what they call the liquid but I want the 65 protection factor, the 60, they have them on the card here, that also has a handy discount code. If anybody wants to take the plunge and get themselves a pair of gunners or somebody wants to get somebody a pair of gunners for Christmas, they did send me a 10% off code. It says happy eyes 10. There you go. So if you use that code at checkout, you can get them. These are not prescription these and so i'm having a bit of an adjustment period i'm fine just sitting here i i do feel the um the the moisture trap effect definitely compared to my other lenses but the curve of the lens and the lack of the prism shift in these is giving me a bit of a whoa while i walk around so i'm still adjusting um obviously in terms of vision i'm dealing with contacts versus um uh, you know, regular glasses because these are not prescription. But you see, they fit pretty comfy under under headphones, and that was one. My thing about Gunners is they've always been very masculine styled, and these are going to work out great for a character for boss fights. So I'm really excited about that. Um, yes, inspired by Far Cry Five. Um, but if if you look at them, you you can see the lenses do have quite a curve to them and you you do notice a difference even sitting here whoa the world's really blue i'm not used to unfiltered my my perceptions of color have completely adapted to wearing amber lenses all the time but you do feel like protected they're like shields shields for your eyes they're great glasses i just wish they'd had more feminine styles maybe one day when i'm like super famous i can do like a women's gunners line could you imagine that? Like a Lady Bits Gunners or like a Boss Fight Gunners line that are, are for women who need the eye protection? Because, well, I think like I kind of make this work because I am a children, a child of the 80s. Um, I feel a bit like the 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 scientist lady from Maniac on Netflix, um, <laughs> which I'm I went back to watching last night. But uh, that's not what we're, we're talking about right now. We're talking about... Um, your feedback and um again i received no extra money i just received the glasses for this but they did send it to me full disclosure thanks gunner um and this month on youtube has been a weird one uh traffic's up yay uh watch time is up monetization is down even though all my stats were up the amount of money i'm making is down because youtube demonetized a few key videos this month one was the shirako video i made so even though they reversed their decision i'm not allowed to say i don't think they should have banned him in the first place apparently that's not advertiser friendly I don't know, but if you want to help me so that I can make enough money to actually afford a pair of gunners with the proper prescription for myself, help support this channel, become a monthly patron, patreon.com slash Leanna K. The patrons got a brand new feature this week. I tried out something new called Gaming Inappropriately, which is the um, fun I get into playing games that is not at all politically correct and uh, it is somewhat lewd. And so obviously I'm not going to put it out in the big wild world of, of YouTube where they'll get demonetized and all that stuff. So it's for the patrons and everybody seemed to have a really good time with it. Um, it was fun. It was um, sailing to the, the Isle of Lesbos with an all-female crew in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. You can imagine how that went. Uh, <laughs> uh, fun gaming. Um, but... Uh, yeah, on to your feedback for the week. Um, 
I wasn't sure how this week was going to go when you consider the, the topics. Um, my voice was shot. You hear it's still not super great in that Beelzebub video. To me, it wasn't one of the better ones I've done because I'm dealing with seasonal affective disorder. I get it bad. Um as the days start to shorten, um, including looking like a twilight vampire if I lean too far forward. Oh, it's not too bad anymore. Cool. Um, but uh, I also start reaching for words and I stumble a lot more. So I didn't feel it was as smooth. There were a few good zingers and people seem to really like it, though. So that's great. I don't know why I'm telling you this, just so you know. Um but that's one of those things if you strive perfect can be the enemy of the good so if you strive for perfection it's like it's not good enough i shall not release that's one of the things that's super cool about youtube you guys don't demand perfection you just demand fun and good and um yeah i didn't know how that argument which was obviously made significantly in jest even though there's a a kernel of truth to it uh, one guy took it super seriously and was like, you don't get it. Um, gamers want all these luxury goods, but won't pay for it. And that's the entitlement and people who shop at Tiffany's, they're willing to pay the prices at Tiffany's. And I was like, wow, you clearly don't know rich people. I mean, the thing about, um, hanging out in Hollywood all the years I did was you realize how many people don't pay for their clothes? They, they do like what I did with these glasses. Somebody gave them to me for, for promotional. And do I like them? Sure. Do I support the brand? Absolutely. Um, do I think they're cool? Yeah. Can I afford them on my own? Not so much. <laughs> um, and that's, that's the same Everybody's got a clothing deal. Everybody's got a clothing sponsor. I had one when I was on TV. And uh, it, it's, it's, you're a walking advertisement for the clothing. Um, it was awesome. Uh, and then I was, I was, you know, buying stuff, the stuff I did have to buy for the show, I was buying it and then selling it again on consignment to afford to be able to do it. Um, rich people are some of the cheapest people on the planet. This was something I really had to get used to growing up in Jane Finch in Toronto. Um, when you grow up the way I did, you see kids work for hours and hours and hours. At the time, the status symbol was, you know, in the 80s, it was the Jordache jeans. But when we went into the 90s, it was Calvin Klein jeans. And these things were 90 bucks, which seems all right by today's standards. But in, you know, in, in the 90s, when you can get a pair of decent but not great jeans for around $60 um, or the 30 we had to pay because we didn't have much money. But you watch these kids save up their own money working at McDonald's to buy a $90 pair of Calvin Klein jeans. And they'd have maybe two or three pairs and that was it. And they'd like baby them and you'd go to the store and you'd buy them full price and uh you know it it was no you paid for them the whole idea is you had your own money and you bought your own things um you know that that destiny's child can you pay my bills can you pay me you know that that whole thing uh that that was the status of lower income environments and when i got into tv and and started you know, crossing paths with incredibly rich people, they don't pay full price for anything. They know a guy who knows a guy who knows a guy who will get it for you for the fraction of the cost. And I mean, it, it's that don't buy retail joke, um, you know, and it's, it's true. Everybody's using connections because connections are the real currency of the very wealthy the your bank account is just like an admission fee and it's it's really staggering to me how much social change how much you think about the world how, how your relationship with money changes as you become upwardly mobile and i think more than anything um that's that's the trouble when you're born into a, a lower income 
family, you're not raised with those norms. You're not raised with those relationships with money, with those relationships with clothes. I mean, the idea of haggling, my God, that was, you know, an embarrassment um, when when uh, I was uh, younger. Uh, you, you, it's like, whoa, you didn't you didn't do it. Um, but now it's like, I mean, that, that goes culture to culture geographically too, right? But um, man, everything's negotiable. Everything is negotiable among the very wealthy. Nobody pays full price. And they it's not it's not just they want to pay for what something's worth. They feel better if they rip someone off, if they get something they feel is a steal instead of just a reasonable price. And uh, that, I'm not sure I can ever, um, I can ever make that leap. So I'm never going to be extremely wealthy. Um, but uh, even even the upward mobility I, I have experienced, um, I, I do have a much different relationship with money than I did 10 years ago. The idea of, of, uh, working through connections is something I admit I I do. That's that's the way the game is played, and it is a game, it is. Um, but enough on that. That's where I'm going to leave the Beelzebub video because I'm just glad you guys liked it. Some people actually like the reduced hello voice um, because my throat was raunched. I'll keep that in mind. I and I I will remind everyone part of the reason I do that voice is people like to frankenbite audio on the internet and I have been a victim of people um taking comments that were intended as part of a comedy routine um out of context and claiming they were what I really believed and part of the utility of the Beelzebub voice is anybody hearing it is going to know that is not me that is an alter ego um and and deal with it accordingly of of all the dirty tricks that people have pulled on me about gaming oh there's a Bacardi box in the background that actually has books in it um but uh, I'll cover that up <laughs> um but uh, of all the dirty tricks that people pulled on me in gaming, that is one of the ones that really, really pisses me off because it was a complete um, kind of artful because they presented the video in, in its entirety but framed the portal to the video in such a way that people just jumped to the part that that they indicated, didn't notice the context, um, you know, didn't notice that the 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 speakers that I was ho the speakers that I was hosting were competing for a golden squeegee, and the winner was a completely fake Kickstarter campaign that made fun of Kickstarter campaigns. Like it was totally a comedy evening, um, but people actually thought that what I was saying was for real, and it drove me crazy. It it still pisses me off because the people that spread that bit of fake news knew it wasn't real they knew they just wanted clicks because I was you know somebody that both sides of the Gamergate controversy liked to beat on at the time and so they knew they were going to get clicks for their website and they knew that who cares if you know people dunked on me as a result it's more clicks and 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 they just fed it it was completely cynical and as somebody who really loves gaming and and believes in fair criticism emphasis on fair that really pissed me off uh, because there there is a certain uh, gentleman's code, gentle person's code, uh, for lack of a better term, when it comes to this stuff that um, people do believe what they see to an extent or they believe that there is at least some truth in it because most people go don't just flat out lie. They try to avoid completely lying if possible. And so people use that, you know, well-meaning, well, there's two sides to every story. Um, that's leverage to screw a person over for clicks. And that really bugs me. So that's one of the reason I do the Beelzebub voice um, because of that. So that there's no doubt what it is if somebody tried to use it against me. Um, cool, cool. Um, with the she stuff, there was just a lot of people offering their opinions and that's totally fine. Like I said, people have the right to their opinions. I did find some follow-up research which I found very interesting. My buddy, um, Mouse Mary Jess, that I did the um, Sims 
uh, song, the, the player song, um, actually sent this to me. Hey man, thanks so much. Fascinating and, and backs up the, the thing I, I kind of observe that there's more to this She-Ra thing than just a bunch of horny guys and the male gaze, air quotes. Um, let me get this up. Um, this is what I'm going to link you to is a uh, Center for Media Literacy study from 1989, I believe. Um, I will link you to it in the in the description boxes. But um, a bunch of market researchers asked a group of kids for their opinions about various girl-focused um, characters. Ooh, I'm in the yucky light again. Um, let's, let's go to this. So girl-focused characters, they focused on Barbie, which most people know is She-Ra, and Mrs. Hart. And if you don't know who Mrs. Hart is, this is Mrs. Hart. This completely passed me by. I was a kid in the 80s. I have no idea what the fuck this is other than terrifying. Okay, it's like Princess Sparkle Muffin had a family. Um, um, yeah, uh, although Princess Sparkle Muffin with the adorable little blonde baby. Maybe this is where Princess Sparkle Muffin came from because the big difference between Mrs. Hart and Barbie is Mrs. Hart was a brunette and, and she was married and Bobby, Bo Bobby, Barbie was a single lady, but that's Mrs. Hart, okay? And... They asked boys and girls a series of questions. Um, what would Barbie, Shira, Mrs. Hart do if one of her friends were mean to her and started calling her names? Um, if Barbie, Shira, or Mrs. Hart had to decide something important, what would she do? And of course, it's multiple choice. Um, if she had a, her choice of what to do on a Saturday night, what would they do? If Barbie, she or Mrs. Hart was watching a movie about a little girl who cries because her dog is run over by a car, would she? And then their their response to crying. And um, then you can read the article for that. It's kind of interesting. But then they asked, this was the thing I found really interesting. Um, they asked what um, relationship boys and girls would like with Mrs. Hart, Barbie, and She-Ra. So Mrs. Hart was seen as the best mom by girls. Um, She-Ra was seen as the best mentor. And I'm breezing through this. So, you know, to spare your time. But when you jump down to boys um, and people wanted Mrs. Hart as a friend more than She-Ra. This is like, what? No, I don't want Mrs. Hart as a friend. I know people like Mrs. Hart. Um, I know a stay-at-home, an actual stay-at-home mom who homeschools her kids, and she reminds me more of She-Ra than Mrs. Hart, for the record. Shout out to my friend Heather. Um, but the boys, so I'll recap. The girls thought She-Ra was the best mentor. Mrs. Hart was the best friend and mother. Now, the boys thought She-Ra was the best of all those categories. The boys that felt She-Ra was the best mom. She-Ra was the best girlfriend. She-Ra was the best friend. Like, She-Ra just ruled that life. But the She-Ra as the best mom was the thing that went ding, 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 ding for me. Because remember I said that there was like this circle of protection involving She-Ra? for these male fans of the old show. And I think we may have found why. I think uh, the, the data from this 1989 survey um, may shed some light on, on, on that protection. People saw She-Ra as like a, 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 an ideal mother. The boys did. The girls didn't. The boys did. Boys got a sense of a protective and nurturing quality out of She-Ra the girls didn't. Interesting stuff, huh? I thought it was very interesting. What also was interesting is that I didn't get the paste pounded out of me for the privilege video. I was sure I was going to get um, like wailed on for that. And I put in the uh, Assassin's Creed gameplay to soften the blow. Um, 
because I know it's an uncomfortable topic. I know a lot of people hate the word. I know a lot of people hate talking about it. So I threw in gameplay. Some people found that distracting. So uh, this is an accessibility thing because on the one hand, it does give people something to watch other than an, an uncomfortable topic. And so it keeps the happy up. Also, I can show off some of my gaming skills. Um, I ended up throwing that in. What I originally want to show was this great stealth run I did in one of the cult fortresses, but that the Elgato game capture software ever since they patched it has just been running like garbage. So it was a previous, the Cyclops fight um, that I did before that I'm like, fine, it's the right length, whatever. Um, but uh, I'm glad people liked it. I I'm sorry it was sort of a clash. Um, I'm not sure what to do about that. I'd love to just put up gameplay videos, but people, not enough people watch them. Unfortunately, uh, there has to be some sort of hook or some sort of analysis with the gameplay or else the numbers are just really, really low, um, like a quarter of what I need. Um, so I, I will keep that in mind. I'm not saying I'm never going to do that again. I, I think that cushioning the blow for more contentious stuff, people that people may have had bad ex uh, topics that people may have had bad experiences in the past. Um, I think it sometimes helps to have that little bit of a distraction, but I will keep in mind that some people find it distracting. I know this is an accessibility issue. I, I know the overstimulation is real with certain neuroatypical, neuroatypical types. So I am aware I will keep it in mind. Sorry, some people found it overwhelming. Um, yeah, um, we'll keep it in mind. Um, but, uh, overall it, I, I was very um buoyed buoyed by the like the floaty thing in the water um by the number of people who said wow you're the first person that's explained privilege to me that in a way that i can actually get behind or made sense to me now a lot of people were like nope 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 that i expected what was the pleasant surprise were the people that were like okay i can get behind this like if this is what it is this is what it is. And the, the, like the other thing I found interesting, by the way, yes, this is what it is. When you actually read the damn source material and not just absorb something from a first year or second year elective course that just you know, it's it's essentially propaganda. It's one of these interdisciplinary courses based on on, on interest, area of interest, not um, method of analysis. So it's not a general sociology course. It's not a, a, a anthropology course, anything like that. It's a, a, an interdisciplinary course, which cherry picks. And um, if you actually go down and, and deep dive into the origins of privilege theory and, 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 the history of it. And what, yeah, it's a lot closer to the way I'm explaining it. Now, that doesn't matter when somebody's giving you grief on the internet, right? But just just for interest's sake, that actually is what it is. There's actually something quite useful um, in, in exploring these, you know, ongoing challenges people's like the, you know, the, the, the black, black people in the United States face, even if they have, you know, upward social mobility and aren't um, economically disadvantaged, there are still certain privileges granted to um, white people of the same economic social status. And that's important to understand, just like I said, so you don't uh, walk around with weaknesses, persistent weaknesses you don't have to have. That, that really is the goal, to actually achieve excellence, to actually make things as good as they can be. It was never intended to be this horrible thing that people should feel bad about. No, like what's the point of that? It, it's also like back in back in my day, you know, when I'm not on the internet, we used to call them blessings. I might just start just embracing that. I try to be sensitive to the sensibilities of the atheist that watch this channel, but that's what it used to be. It's like, count your blessings. Be happy for the the ways you have a good that other people don't. Because you know what? You'll be less of an asshole that way. So I was really happy that people in, enjoyed that. Um, I'm, I'm glad we could at least have a uh, respectful dialogue about it. And, you know, even if people didn't 
even if people weren't persuaded, that's fine. You can't persuade everybody. It's just not possible. Some people's experiences are too bad. And, and the reality is, yes, online, the culture warriors do get to make words be meaningless. And, you know, as some people pointed out, you know, disadvantage was start stopped being used because it was offending too many people. Perhaps privilege should be stopped being used because it offends too many people. I see the logic in that argument. My only concern about that is this is my problem with political correctness and getting off um, word usages just because some people get offended the minute culture warriors recognize that you'll start abandoning things just not to offend not because you think it's wrong just to avoid offense they'll do that to everything you try to do and at some point you do have to Gandalf it and go you shall not pass and decide no I'm not going to be pushed around by a bunch of online culture war bullies anymore and that's why my personal morality, my personal test is I do not change something just to be inoffensive. Y you may have noticed. <laughs> I defend Ivy Valentine. Uh, thank, uh, foreshadowing for Monday's video. Um, the uh, I have to be persuaded that there is actually a good reason to change something, that a term is inaccurate or there is another term that is actually better. I'm not just going to be jumping around terms just to not offend. I remember when, you know, years back and, and people got offended over the term transgender and they kept yelling at me because it's trans, it's trans. Don't say transgender, it's trans. And at the time, people didn't know from trans. And I said at the time, look, I understand you would prefer I use it, but people watch my channel, they don't even know what cisgender means yet. So I am going to continue to use the term transgender for clarity for people who need the information. You know, don't race ahead of people in, in your attempts to conquer the moral high ground. And there are, there is a wisdom to allowing people to catch up. Real lasting progress is slow, painfully slow a lot of the time, but emphasis is on lasting. I would rather that than this pendulum swing that just knocks people over. You know, too many people get hurt um, by the fighting and... Um, I don't like, I don't like sitting back and watching that. I try to be an active participant just because, uh, at least I feel like I'm doing something for the good, but I'm certainly not going to be a part of that rapid pendulum swinging that is knocking everybody over, even though my personal politics are, are extremely left-wing and progressive. Uh, Canadian politics is so, um is so far to the left compared to American politics that right now the fight in our federal government is what kind of gun control is best for Canada, not whether we should have gun control at all. The um, every, um, every political party is actually offering a different form of gun control, but, but the, the idea that no, there should be none whatsoever, we want this to die, that's not even on the table. That's how different... Canada is from America and so you know to to the bulk of you guys who are Black Friday shopping right now in America our Black Friday sucks up here Boxing Week uh, Boxing Day the day after Christmas it started off as Boxing Day now it's Boxing Week uh, that's our big sale we have some Black Friday sales up here but they're like 40% instead of like the 75% 85% you guys get down there our Black Friday shopping sucks because we have that um, that Commonwealth uh, a holiday that um, I was trying to explain Boxing Week and um, postal codes, the postal code form of letter, number, letter, number, letter, number to my friend in America, uh, my friend in Vermont. 
And she was like, whoa, 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 I can only follow so much. And that's what I mean. You have to let people catch up. Um, and so I will leave it there. Thank you very much for your feedback. Hope you found this interesting. Once again, help support this channel. Become a monthly patron. Patreon.com slash Leanna K. So I continue to bring you videos based on interest. Not what I think YouTube's going to let me keep monetization on. Okay, thanks. Have a great weekend. Have a great recovering from Turkey. Have great leftovers. Uh, and thanks for watching.